Hi there, thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video I share with you my techniques and tips on how I do three stages to create this aging skin and grey hair study. I go through the underpainting stage, the rich colour stage and the final detail stage. So be sure to watch it right through till the end because here and there I'll be slowing things down in real time so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. Just running through the outline pretty quick. I didn't want to spend too much time on this um, part of the tutorial but I've used a quarter grid I mean it's a great way to learn how to do freehand you start off with an inch grid two inch grid three inch then you end up with quarter grid and then eventually end up with a center point the quarter grid is close to freehand because you've got a lot of area there to sort of find the location of things and how I do that is use imaginary angles comparing one shape with the other uh, using my pencil on a horizontal plane, also on a vertical plane as well, to find where these areas are. Now, there's plenty of videos in my channel that explain how I do the freehand method. I'll show a couple of examples here for you to check out if you wish to. I'll put the link in the description below for you. Starting off with the palette then, using warm red and white together. yellow ochre and warm red yellow ochre I'm tinting with white again umber and red and ultramarine blue and brown for the shadows there now for the desaturation of the skin tone I'm using green so it's yellow ochre and ultramarine blue Now the brushes, three number five hog air brushes, rounds, three number two rounds, and then a selection of synthetic brushes, flats and rounds there. So firstly just ghosting the outline with a Faber-Castell kneadable eraser just to get the excess graphite off the canvas there. You've just got to lay some colour down first. I'm using the biggest round brush here, number fives and then just blending the light red with the yellow ochre mix with it as well and it's just a case of mixing it on the actual canvas now the reason I have three brushes I have one for the mid-tone one for the lights and one for the darks so it's best to do that so it don't sort of get everything sort of muddy now here I'm using uh, a mixture of brown and red together to create the shadows and then subtling it up with a little bit of green and red so I'm using smaller brushes now so you've got to sort of experiment and see what's you know the best thing for you to use sometimes you need a bigger brush uh, just to lay some paint on because really this underpainting is just a matter of recorrecting the outline and just getting the basic form in there. I'm not really interested in getting the colour right, the value or the chroma. It's just about getting everything in shape. Now using synthetic rounds here to mix a colour up for the eyes. So I'm using brown and ultramarine blue to, for the blacks. I don't uh, use black, I just mix it by using those two colours, brown and blue. And then I'm adding a bit of lemon yellow to the mix to create the actual greeny blue colour. So like I say, it's just a basic sort of structure. So I'm not too worried about the colours at this stage. It's just a matter of getting that basic form in. Now my approach these days is to try and be more painterly and more sort of spontaneous. So I'm not trying to put every detail down. This is not the detail stage anyway, but it's just a case of just getting that sort of feeling and the way you connect to the feeling is to open your heart let go of the mind and really focus on the energy of the reference image the more you can send this open heartness out to the reference image the more you'll see and the more you'll feel the actual feeling of the person you're actually painting 
I'm running through this quite quickly, but if you're interested in seeing the whole of this actual tutorial as real-time audio, real-time video, it is in my Patreon at the moment, four parts. The link is in the description below. Just a little information about the actual board I'm using here. It's a canvas board I've made myself. It's actually a flex canvas stuck to a 6mm MDF and it is actually primed with Michael Hardin non-absorbent primer. It's amazing stuff. I really recommend it. Makes all the difference. Please check out the video in my channel. It's a beginner's guide how to prime canvases. Uh, it's ideal for when you're starting out. Now for the hair, I'm just using these brushes here, big brushes. Three again, one for lights, one for medium, one for darks. And basically just getting, again, the actual drawing correct. So I'm correcting the outline, getting a feel for the placement of the actual shapes. So if you look at the hair as shapes and flow, so get the rhythm and flow to the hair, and just paint that rather than trying to focus on the details. Now the mixer I'm using is quite straightforward. It's just burnt umber and ultramarine blue, which creates nice greys as it is. But then I'm just adding a bit of lemon yellow to it, to the mix, just to create that sort of greeny tinge to it. And so you just sort of, again, mixing it on the board, um, just feeling your way through, and then just enjoying the flow of it and the spontaneity. I'm mainly paint straight out the tube again, not too much liquid. If you put too much liquid in it goes a bit sort of slippery. So you just need enough just to get the flow. It depends on what brand you've got. I mean I use Michael Howard in paints which are like buttery. But if you've got something which is a bit stiffer, just add that little bit of liquid just to get that sort of flow to it. Now the background colour I'm using is burnt umber, ultramarine blue, bit of yellow ochre and also a little bit of red if needed just to desaturate the greeny feel to it. I use quite a bit of paint here uh, and then what I'll do then is just to sort of smooth it out I use this fan brush here a synthetic fan brush and just very very lightly go over it and you can see it's smoothing out. You don't need a lot of pressure but just enough and it's a case of just keep adding pigment and then just keep smoothing out and just doing the same thing time and time again until it's right. Once your canvas is dry, then you're ready for the second stage, the rich colours. Now I've mixed the paint the same as I did on the under painting, uh, but less white because you need it more translucent. And then additionally I've added some more chroma to it now. So I'm using lemon yellow and red uh, to create more of a zingy colour the cold red and cold blue to create cold colours. Here's the brushes I'll be using for the rich colour stage, all listed on screen there for you. Starting with the shadows then under the eyebrow there. Uh, just a mixture of green and red together and then just working it in, so more or less scrubbing it in really. Hardly any white in there so it's just translucent. I've not put any liquid at all in and I'm using the brown and blue here for some of the areas where they're a bit darker. I'm just mixing it up really. Some, sometimes I use the brown and blue, sometimes I use a bit of green with it as well. Uh, just see how it goes. Uh, here I'm putting pink in there. If you desaturate, if you need to desaturate it, you have to use light green with that, which is the complementary colour. Um, but just scrubbing it in, just getting more pigment down, just going over what's already dried from the under painting. Now here's a darker area here. So I'm using a bit of brown and blue then mixing a bit of green and red to get the subtleties of that shadow. Now it's still a blocking stage this stage. Uh, there's a little bit of detail but it's not the subtleties. That'd be the last stage which is when this is dry I'll go in with the details but what I'm doing is preparing the way for that detail stage so I'm getting everything more and more refined and I'm looking at the value, the temperature and the chroma so I'm focusing on that with this stage and just preparing my way so you have to think ahead what what's going to be needed when you actually 
start doing the details but that all comes with experience. I'm also aware of the texture that's needed as well so I'm building that up. I'm not using much wit liquid that's because I'm using Michael Harding paints. Now if your paint is quite dry you just need a little bit of uh, liquid with it. it depends what brand you're using but here I'm using like a a colder red so I'm using the ultramarine blue and the Elysium Crimson making like a purple and putting that in areas now in the pupil here I'm using brown and blue so I don't use black really when I'm painting just mix my own and then just basically just putting it on very thinly and just glazing over what I've done underneath and just changing up the actual feel of it again it's all preparation for the next stage now I'm using the flats there in areas and the rounds to create a little bit of texture uh, just under the eyebrow there just playing about moving things around one thing about when you put a lot of paint down you can move it so you can push and pull paint around so it's it makes it quite enjoyable to sort of mix on the actual canvas so it's not too dry now preparing the highlights now in the hair ready for the next stage again you have to think this is just a blocking stage so you got, it's really good if you keep in mind that these stages you can only go so far so then you're not really looking at the detail so much you, you're just really interested in getting the feel right getting that movement right getting the highlights the chroma the value and the temperature something like so when you do start putting the details in the next stage it becomes quite straightforward then if you're enjoying this video why not subscribe it's absolutely free and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos the mixture i'm using for the hair is burnt umber ultramarine blue and a bit of lemon yellow here and there now once your painting is dry you're ready for the last stage which is the detail and glazing palette laid out exactly the same um, but now i'm not putting so much white in so it's a very small amount of paint and very small amount of white so you don't need a lot of paint with this one because you're really just scrubbing in these really fine details and subtleties and um, it's just a case of just making sure you don't put too much white in there because it makes it milky if you're not careful if you're in a country that allows lead white I would recommend using a mixture of titanium white and lead white together because it'll create more of a pearly look to your painting adding now some rich vibrant colors by using the warm red and lemon yellow together and also mixing cold colors there blue and elysium crimson brushes all listed at the side there two sable number zero zero for the very fine details and the two rigger brushes for the actual fine details of the hair Gonna a bit of pink here it's just a case now of getting that sort of glazy less white in it and then it makes it glower then you see create a glow and then you might need a little bit of white just to tint it up once you put it in was just a quick preview of my patreon page where everything is real time moment by moment so if you want to check that out please look at the link in the description below it will send you to a library page where you can see what's on offer now i'm adding the texture in there now so i'm very very small sort of marks like i do when i do my pastels using that white to tint it and then adding that sort of glaze over the top uh, and then just creating this sort of feeling of skin then because skin's not smooth there's all sorts of t little squiggles and marks in it now for the shadows here I'm using a cold red with a, gr a green mix really so it's just like desaturating it and then adding that little bit of lemon yellow in the lighter areas just to create that sort of chroma 
Um, so it's just trying to get that sort of balance of the temperature, the chroma, the value. Uh, everything's all sort of taken into account, really, with the detail stage. Here I'm using a mixture of brown, blue, and a bit of lemon yellow, like it is in the hair. And then just putting very, very fine details here and there, mixing it up. And... Uh, creating the texture but I'm not trying to put every fine hair exactly like the reference image I'm trying to keep it spontaneous and my interpretation because uh, I'm trying to be more spontaneous and more sort of um, painterly really not like hyper realism making it realistic but not trying to get it exactly like the reference and it keeps it sort of I feel more relaxed and more sort of alive by doing that the key thing really when I'm painting is to open my heart, let go of the mind and really focus on the reference and bring that reference image into me rather than going too far forward and being outside of myself trying to get every detail. So the more you can relax and more you can bring that image into you, the more it's free flowing. The eyes of course as uh, the mirror of the soul so really are focusing now on the personality and the energy of the person and just letting these details take care of themselves and just feel your way just getting the balance look at it as seeing the the color the temperature the value the chroma and focus on that rather than detail and the details just take care of themselves then you just put in a little bit of color here a bit of different color there and it just appears to what you're actually looking at then so just have faith and just let go now I'm using blue and orange mix for the white of the eyes uh, it's a really great way of getting greys it's a natural way with the complementary colours and then adding that little bit of lemon yellow if it needs that sort of vibrancy in certain areas when you're putting the white in there um, it's just playing about really with uh, the different uh, temperatures now here you can see how I'm putting that texture into the skin. There's no liquid mixed in with uh, the paint, just more or less straight out the tube, but mixing it on the actual canvas there and just moving it around, pushing it and pulling it, putting a bit of highlight here, a bit of uh, a darker colour there, and playing about with temperatures and just moving things, because skin is not smooth, especially with an ageing skin. Uh, so it's just really again just open up and and just be spontaneous and just feel your way really I, I don't try and put every little speck the same as what's on the reference as well it's my interpretation so I'm just playing with uh, different sorts of shades and that and and just enjoying it really just enjoying that feeling but all the time connecting to the energy and the sort of personality of the person and bringing that out and all the colors and everything else seems to just take care of themselves really it's, it's, it's a strange sensation but more you let go the more these things just happen if you're enjoying this video why not give it a like and share it with your friends it would mean so much to me as this would help the channel to grow if something is feeling glowier just add that little bit of lemon yellow, it just does the trick, no matter what colour it is, just adding that lemon yellow to it, it seems to really give it that sort of kick. Now for the eyebrows, they're quite unusual eyebrows these are. Well, I thought it might be best if I give you a clip of what it's like on my Patreon page, where you can actually hear and see me all in real time, in the moment, the here and now. If you'd like to know more about Patreon, the link is in the description below. Fucking mirror, that's what it's like. I don't want to look like a, you know, a uh, caterpillar over his eye. It's got a very top a little bit, but they are quite unusual. Eyebrows. Uh, turn your brush.
I'm going to start putting the lighter colours over these dark ones, it'll look better, it's just a moment it looks a bit strange. But I'm going to start putting the other colours in with it. Of it. I'll do that now actually. So you've got your, your grey mix, so it's obviously grey colour, uh, a bit of a reddy colour to it, so a bit of a zinginess to it as well. So I'm just going to grab a bit of this and mix in with this grey here. Look, that's how you've got to move things around on your palette. And then just see it's not white enough, so you've got to put lighter. It looks whiter when you look at on, on, on palette, but when you put it on your picture, it's Sometimes it's not the same colour, so. Just a little example there on my Patreon. If you want to check out the library, there's loads of uh, tutorials on there, and they're exclusive to Patreon in real time. So please check out the link in the description below. Just changing up the colour of the hair in the eyebrows here and there with a bit of red mixed in with the light grey there. Background is brown, ultramarine blue, a bit of lemon yellow, and I've also added a little bit of red to this mix just to sort of desaturate it. You can see it there in the background. Now for the highlights to really achieve that really vibrancy, I've not put liquid in there. Um, because normally when I'm using this rigger brush, I put quite a bit of liquid in to get that sort of flowing with it, that flowing movement. But here I've just put in neat paint uh, because I want it to really be sort of vibrant. What happens with the liquid, it does actually kill the sort of vibrancy out of it sometimes with the white. Uh, so here I've not used any. Just turning the brush quite a lot just to get a sort of point to it. But just flowing again with it, just being spontaneous, just let it happen. Feel the rhythm of the hair and the movement and I don't try and put every hair exactly the same as reference again it's just a matter of just getting that sort of feeling of flowing rhythm and aliveness to it. Adding a little bit of liquid where there's a tonal value to it uh, to make it sort of translucent and the colour underneath seems to sort of change the colour of the actual mark I'm putting on as well. Now for the wisps of hair over the background there it makes it easier when you've got the background in because you've got a vehicle you've got some paint to actually get that flow on top of so that helps. Uh, so sometimes it's a good idea in some areas to scrub a bit of colour and glaze a bit of colour over it before you put the fine hairs over so it might be worth playing about with that because sometimes I do that. Again, mixing the brown, ultramarine blue, a bit of yellow ochre with this as well, and a bit of lemon yellow for really sort of vibrant areas. Now you can see how I'm doing it over the background, just keeping things nice and flowing, free flowing. Keep turning that brush to get a fine point and, and just flow with it. So I'm varying the pressure on the brush as well because some areas are more sort of highlighted and some are not. It's like broken lines really, it's not one straight line, there's little glints in these strands of hair here, these wisps of hair, these like little bits of glints. And what I tend to do is add those at the end, so here you can see me doing that, just here and there, just adding that little bit more white, just to give it that sort of lively feeling to it. Hope you enjoyed this example of my Patreon oil painting study. Um, here is the actual study at the correct angle, full on view. If you want to see more of my work, please check out this link here for more. Take care, thanks for watching.